fucking time. Just here getting ready. John's gonna do some preaching, and um, does he do loud? We're gonna get the, yep, yep. We're gonna get the good news out. You're allowed to do that. They don't shut you down. Because well, I heard some really loud music here on Sixth. Yeah, yeah. There, there's some uh, there's some confusion on what free speech looks like in downtown okay. Grants Pass too. Um, <laughs> so it's been a while. All right, John. Our city our city needs to hear some good news, brother. Have you ever hated anyone? The 
Bible equates hate with murder. Jesus says if you're angry with your you brother, you're in danger of I'm hellfire. Thinking. The Bible says if you hate your brother, and it's talking He's about humanity, if you hate your brother, then you are a murderer. So having that thought, that intent, somebody called it a thought crime. Accusing God saying, oh, your God is calls people all sorts of things. He says they're, they're thought criminals, or he, he accuses them of thought crime. Pretty much, pretty much. That's what it is, a thought crime. So God knows the thoughts of our heart. So I was talking to a gentleman earlier. He said, uh, he said that God knows my heart. And I said, absolutely, God does know your heart. And he knows all the sins of your youth. Everything is that, her? that you've done ever since you've been a, a, a little a baby. And, and so that's, that's terrifying if God knows all of your thoughts. Did y'all get one of these? He knows all of your crimes. If you're talking about judicial, you know, justice and being in front of the judge. And he says, well, it's different. God's different than the judge. Yeah, but not in the way you would think. Not in a good way. Because God knows the thoughts and intents of your heart. Every sin that you've ever committed. That's terrifying. Versus a judge, he can only look at forensic evidence and eyewitness testimony, videos, pictures, things like that. He can only look at the tangible things to make a decision. Where God is omniscient, he's perfect, and he is holy. He's holy, holy, holy. And that's why we use the Ten Commandments. We preach the law of God to reveal sin because we've sinned against God by lying, by theft, by blasphemy, by lust, even adultery proper, if you've ever committed adultery against your, your spouse, that's the, that's a terrible thing. But but even just looking with lust is adultery of the heart, Jesus would say. And if you've ever said, well, my God would judge me for me. Same that they've always been, no, no so, amplification of sound. So, just, just like last year when you guys were out here. Uh, okay. Well, we're going to be filing a complaint, so I want to get this on video. The, the, the ordinance doesn't say no amplification. It says no unreasonable amplification. Um, you guys do know the specific wording of the ordinance, Tim? T Tim, this is important. Do you know the specific wording of that ordinance? It says no unreasonable noise. I was on the other side of the street. It was not unreasonable. Ma'am, are you calling yourself a Christian? I'm just curious. Are you are you saying that you're a Christian? I behave more Christ-like than this. That's not what I asked you. I said, are you calling yourself a Christian? Yeah, I guess I would. Yeah. So do you know that Jesus said that everybody's under the condemnation of sin unless you believe in him? That that it's better for you to cut your hand off and to enter eternity without your hand? What else did he say? He said He said I am the way I, I'm the way that, I'm the way the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. That's what he says. That's right. So you have to repent of your sins. He said out of all the gifts, what is the best gift? Are you guys acting are you preaching love? Absolutely, the love of God. Because the law of God is love to you by acting like this ever and that is where you do it, not bring is it possible ma'am that you wouldn't be drawn because you're actually in wicked rebellion against god and since no, you love sir. your sin no, since sir. you love your sin you don't no, want to if, what sin if, what, what sin do i love you tell me shame on you have you, you ever had no right to judge me and say that actually i do because if you no, hate you what, if you hate not. what he's the bible saying says you do not actually ma'am i don't know if you know your bible because i do know my bible john chapter you know that john chapter 7 tells us to judge with righteous judgment 
great. Do you know what? Yeah. It says, who's supposed to judge? Not you. God. Not I. God. That's right. Well, it actually, I just quoted. Jesus told us to judge with righteous judgment, ma'am. You guys do. You pick out the most but do you know what you're doing? You're not even picking out quotes of the Bible. You've got an imaginary Jesus. Yeah, you're against the abortion. Absolutely. Absolutely. Are you okay with kids in cages? Am I okay? Am I okay with kids in cages? I'm not okay putting kids in cages. No. Really? Yeah. You're not. I don't like putting kids in cages. Absolutely not. You're okay. You're you're not okay with with what Trump's doing to to taking people away from immigrants? So, ma'am, I'm not a Trump supporter. No. No. You know what? God bless you for that. So, ma'am, are you are you going to stand and join me right now and say that all abortion is murder and should never happen? All abortion is murder. I do not believe in abortion. I don't. That's not what I asked. Should you tell others that abortion is murder and and no. and end it in our land? No. Why not? Because it's not up to me to make choices. Then you don't love your neighbor, is what you're saying. No, sir. That's not what I'm. Saying. That's what you're saying. What, no, sir. You don't love the preborn neighbor, the baby in the womb. Excuse me. You can't if if the preborn baby in the womb is being killed, sir. With anybody outside of Mary? No. Nope. Never. No. Nope. Good for you. Okay. Okay, but you know what? You have no right to judge others. You have no right to judge that woman. And you have. It is up to God. Oh, ma'am, you're making up your own religion. You're just making up your religion as you go. No, that baby. That baby did not do anything to deserve death. No matter what kind of justification you want to make, ma'am. Christ is King and Christ is Lord. His word is true. Okay, stay with them. That's what we lean on. The precious, sinless blood of Jesus Christ, the God man. God became flesh, dwelt among us, died on the cross, buried and rose again to life. That is our hope. That's the good news that you can be cleansed from your sin in an instant. It doesn't take a lifetime. It doesn't take even a day or an hour. In an instant, if you will humble yourself, repent of your sins, turn to Christ, and live. Because frankly, you don't know where you're going to die. I mean, do any of you know when you're going to die? I, I would hope you'd have a long life, have a long and, and fruitful, happy life, healthy, happy, and so forth. But even if you do Kathy. that, and you've never repented and trusted in Christ, and you die in your sins and you end up in hell for all eternity, how terrible is that? That, that is just terrible. Rather, the Bible says today is the day of salvation. Don't harden your hearts. Trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Let God soften your heart. He will grant you repentance, grant you faith. And as I said, he is holy, holy, holy. And he can't let sin into heaven. You must be perfect as your father is in, in heaven. And how does that work? You say, John, you're not perfect. You're absolutely right, I'm not perfect. But I'm trusting in the finished work of Christ and his perfection. He has given me his perfection. And by God's grace, I, I walk with him. And that's what I want for you, my friends, is perfection in Christ, that you would trust in Jesus' finished work on the cross <laughs> to save you from your sins today. Because it's not about trying to obey the commandments, because as we talked about before, if you've lied once, if you've stolen one thing... If Ma'am, we're here to make sure that all people will repent before the Lord of the universe. And that would be our exhortation to you too, ma'am. Today is the day of salvation. Please do not, hard, please do not harden your heart. She didn't even answer me why Jesus was still put on the cross. A place of torment. I mean, she... It, but we don't want I mean, you to it's go really, it's, it's super that sad that we want she can think that she's a Christian without from sin, knowing anything death, about... And hell. Who he Wouldn't was, that be amazing? Who he is today, God could save you tonight. Super Just sad. through the preaching, the foolishness of preaching, of getting up here on a box, and you probably say, "Oh, the guy looks like an idiot." Well, well, so what? So what? I want you to be saved from the wrath of God, and He could do that even even tonight. So, please, friends, turn to Christ 
and live today. Turn to Christ and live today.